Good day, viewers, and welcome today again to another time of refreshing as we study at the feet of Jesus. Today, under the general theme for the year, the Christian race, and the sub theme, Trinity Sunday, we'll be looking at a topic that says unity in the race. What a joy it is again to celebrate Trinity this season. Our topic is unity in the race. And our text today will be taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, beginning from verse 23 to 34. Specifically, we have two aims. One will be to teach the unity in Christendom as an antidote of satanic invasion and to discuss how we can be united effectively, even in our diversity. The Lord will help us look into all those. The Word of God speaking. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. The Lord will be sending his word, and we are praying that it will be a harvest of prosperity as our hearts meet with faith, meet with the word of God. We are equally profoundly excited to have in the studio with us today our revered church fathers, my Lord bishops, whom the Lord has prepared for such a time as this to guide us in today's discussion. By my left, the right Reverend Eshaya Baba, the Lord Bishop, Anglican Diocese of Zaria. Father in God, my Lord, you are welcome to the program. Good day, viewers. It's a pleasure to be with you again. And then by my right, the right Reverend Ebenezer Saiki, the Lord Bishop, Anglican Diocese of Akokedo. Father and God, my Lord, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good day, viewers. Good being with you again. I encourage you to get your notepads, get your writing materials, sit tight via the mouth of our fathers and God. The Lord will be dropping specific instructions that will guide us in this season of Trinity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Our background text, I'll read quickly from the New King James Version of the Scripture. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, from verse 23. We will run and build the discussion from there. Verse 23 of Acts, chapter 4. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together, to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servant that with all boldness they may speak your word, by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaking, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. Maybe let me read verse 35 just to put it in context. And laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as anyone had need. The word of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Introduction. We thank God for another Trinity Sunday, a Sunday that reminds us of the unity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, as one God in three, and not three gods in one. 
The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ brings believers together in the unity of faith with God the Father, our Maker, Jesus Christ, our Savior, that is God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier of the church. Biblical passages reveal that the three in one God reveal the three in one God as one. The early church operated in this Trinitarian power, which brought, brought about her firm establishment. We can see the power of oppression against the apostles in action in our text today. But the church united against this her enemy and conquered the gate of hell. We can't say it enough. We can't overemphasize the strength that is drawn when we are united. In fact, one of the fervent prayers of the master before he left was that the church be one. He said that they may be one. So as we go fully into today's discussion, we pray that the Lord will prepare our hearts so that we will be committed to building the unity, to building unity in the body of Christ. The Lord will help us Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My Lord, Lord Bishop <clears throat> of Zaria, yes. how can you explain the term Trinity in the context of Genesis chapter 1, 1 to 3 and verse 26? I humbly, my Lord, plead with you to help us read that. And then, my Lord, the Lord Bishop of Akokoedo, Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And I'll take Matthew 3, 16 to 17. And we'll welcome your thoughts, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I read uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, as well as verse 26. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the, uh, of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there, there was light. Verse 26. 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. My Lord Bishop of Akokedu, please, sir. Luke 1, 35. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Matthew 3, 16 to 17, I read, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God <coughs> descending like a dove and a lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. My Lord Bishop, yeah. the term unity in the context of all these references. Um, again, good day, viewers. Um, the, from these texts that are given to us that we've read, we discover that right from the beginning, God was there and the Holy Spirit was there in the creation. Yes, my Lord. And in verse 26, we see that God said particularly, let us oh. make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion. Yes, my Lord. So in this text, we see God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit in unity and in unison, hmm. creating the heavens and the earth. Awesome. And John again backs it up when he says that, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the, the word, word was, was God. God. The same in the beginning was the word with God. All things were made, made by him, him, and without him was not anything made that was made. made. Awesome. In him was, was the light, light, and the light, and the life was the light of man. So now, you see, it's so clear here that God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, in, unis in, in unison created the heavens and the earth. Hmm. Now we see again in the conception when the annunciation was made of the birth of Christ, 
the angel says specifically as our lord bishop of our uh, uh, did re read that it, it, he said, the angel said the spirit of god will come upon you oh, and overshadow you mm -hmm. so the, the the baby that is going to be born is going to be the son of the of most god. high mm. again we see it at the baptism clearly when jesus was baptized the bible said the spirit of god descended in form of a dove and light and and descended upon jesus mm. and a voice from heaven said this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased awesome. so we see we see the father the son and the husband are at work hmm. which which shows even as as christians and as believers in christ there's there must be unity among us awesome hmm. because when we live without unity we 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 we, we don't show god hmm. we don't we don't depict who god is hmm. it's only in unity that we demonstrate who God is, awesome. who the Father is, who the Son is, and who the Holy Spirit is. Awesome. Very powerful. Yeah. Insightful. The Lord is already blessing us. My Lord Bishop of Akokedo, in the context of all these verses, and perhaps other scriptures, supporting scriptures, your understanding of Trinity. I want to thank uh, Baba Zaria. Mm. The first point I want to bring out is the Godhead has always been at work. Mm. We are not just talking about Trinity today. It has been there, there. from the beginning. The beginning. The beginning. Mm. From the beginning. The scriptures made it so clear. God is the author of togetherness. Mm. Amazing. He is the source mm. of unity. unity. Every other thing would look on him or at him or upon him mm. to know what it is to be united. To Jesus. be united. Jesus. Now, another very interesting thing caught my attention when we're reading Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. See the way the New Living Translation would put it. Mm. Then God said, let us make human beings hmm. in our image. Jesus. It means God is already celebrating and enjoying the unity. He wants to replicate it Jesus. in mankind. Hmm. See, let us, the unity we are enjoying as Godhead, let's see how we could replicate it Amongst in men. the existence of man. Hmm. Let us make human beings hmm. in our image, image of togetherness, of unity, of oneness, hmm. to be like ourselves. That's the word. Let's make human beings in our image to be like ourselves. Jesus. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground hmm, powerful insightful scripture hmm. you know there's a line that caught me as our baba kokedo was saying he said every other creation will have to look up to him he's the source of togetherness so could it be i'm led to suspect that to the extent that we do not look up to the trinity hmm. to the triune god hmm. we will be pursuing shadows we will not be united absolutely Child of Absolutely. God, God is already establishing a matter. That for us to continue on this pathway of unity, we must gaze, we must continually fix our gaze on him. The Lord will help us. Amen. My Lord Bishop of Akokod, I still say with you again, how can you describe the unity of the early church in our study today? You help us read verse 32 of Acts chapter 4. And then my Lord Bishop, Baba Zaria, Please, my Lord. Yes. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. Okay. Acts chapter 4, verse 32. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 12. Chapter 5, verse 12 say, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the pe the people and they were all with one accord in solomon's park awesome the unity 
in the early church. Yeah. Your take, my Lord Bishop Vakopi. Mm -hmm. Let me give the background to the passage I read. These were men who operated under the power of the Most High God. The Holy Spirit was at work. The church was multiplying. Mm. And some men felt they could stop this invasion of God mm. into the hearts of men. Mm. So they said, let's stop these people. Let's, let's, what do we do? They are untrained, yet mm. they are making more impact than... In fact, in Acts 17, someone said they've turned the whole world upside, upside down. down. Mm. So the, the, their attempt was to silence them. Mm. And it sounds like a few of them were reported to say, look, Peter, be careful. Don't mm. continue this, your work. Mm. He did, did keep it to himself. Verse 23, he said, and being let go, they went to their companion togetherness in Jesus. the early church jesus he didn't carry the load all alone he said this is not all about me hmm. this is all about us awesome he went ahead and shared with his brethren and the next step they took sir they said let us pray Hi. and they went into Lessons prayers for us. so togetherness no wonder look at the early church they grew like wildfire the scriptures will say and thousands were added. were added to the church that was what unity could do togetherness is an ingredient for increment you know people study church growth how do we church grow? this is the matter this is where it lies absolutely hmm, an ingredient absolutely. for building the church my it lord it is an ingredient for growth yes my lord naturally you say together we stand and divided, divided we fall. when we are united we are strengthened awesome there there is strength hmm. in togetherness awesome and that was what happened in the early church they enjoyed togetherness and it worked for them awesome you know the desire of god is that also the church of today will be united mm. my lord your take the uh, early church yes just like baba kokwedo is saying um um the secret of miracles, signs and wonders lies in the unity of the church. Jesus. Outside is in the unity of the church, we can perform signs and wonders. Look at what the Bible says. And through the hands of the apostles, Jesus. many signs and wonders were done among the people. Among the people. Hmm. Among the people and our people today, our people today, there are many things that need to be done among them. Awesome. There are needs that need to be met. met. Hmm. There, are, there, are, there are hungers that need to be satisfied. Hmm. There are poverties that need to be turned around hmm. for prosperity. There, there, are, there, there are dreams that need to be actualized. Hmm. And there are tremendous things that need to be done. But it can be done if the church is divided. Hmm. So, so uh, like the Church of Nigeria, the three houses must be united. Yes, my Lord. The house of lady, the, allies, the house of clergy, and the, li the house of bishop, bishop. We must be united. Awesome. As we join hands with our primate to bring the glory of God down in the church within our, uh, uh, our denomination. Awesome. And even beyond that. Awesome. Because as an Anglican church, we, we are the pace setters, as it were. Awesome. We are the Church of Nigeria. Awesome. We must be seen to, to be at work in unity. Awesome. So that we can bring the glory of God down in the hearts of men. Awesome. You know, that lines remind me what our bishop theologians, the Lord Bishop Asaju once said, that we are the only church mm. of Nigeria. Mm. And so we must be the pace setter. When people want to study unity, they should come and understudy. That's the injunction. That's the take away from what God is saying to us today. I know, my Lord Bishop, you were saying there are hungers that need to be satisfied. There are poverty, there are needs around. Indeed, there is a genuine cause. You know when David appeared to the scene? Yes. In, in Second Samuel chapter 17? Yes. The brothers earlier, they were like, we know you. You yes. always, why, what have you come to do here? David said, is there not, not a cause? Mm -hmm. Is there not a need? Why would we jettison building unity? and be scratching around when there are need poverty hunger has to be satisfied the church needs to and come sicknesses alive. to be healed to be healed that's what this we can do to be, to when we come together rather than working at cross purposes yeah, no. my lord by, by way of adding the scripture thank god for the topic awesome. thank god for today hmm. trinity sunday, sunday. Mm. and we are dealing with unity, unity. 
Now, in verse 24, it says, So when they underline the word they, not, not him, him. Mm. Hmm. it's Jesus. they insightful. Look at verse 31. And when they had, it was all about them togetherness, the bonds come. And when they had prayed, no wonder sicknesses were healed. Yes. Let's push it further. If you are not united with God, nothing can happen in your life. Absolutely. Hmm. You, your relationship with God must be very strong. strong. Consolidated for things to begin to come. Jesus. You know, Father in God, two things, and the Lord perhaps will lead us to pray as we get into break. When they, it means, it, it tells me, the Holy Spirit is witnessing my spirit that nobody prayed alone. Mm. You know, sometimes we see people who say we are in the prayer arm of the church. We are the only righteous people. These people are sinners. They can't even pray. When they, when they, the Lord will help us so that we will begin to pursue this even as children of God. Father and God, just a short word of prayer before we get into break. All that makes for unity, may God restore again in this season Amen. amongst us, Amen. even as a communion. Amen. Father and God. Heaven the Father, we are asking mm, Jesus. for the spirit yes, of Lord. oneness. Yes, Amen. Yes, the Holy Spirit yes, is yes, a united yes, spirit Lord. with the yes, Godhead. Yes. Amen. You can't separate the Holy Spirit mm. from the Godhead. Mm. Father, Unite the church. Amen. Unite the body mm. that we may invade the world in your name. Amen. Amen. Your power. Amen. Lord, let the land be invaded. Amen. This Trinity Sunday, mm. Father, let it be the birth of yes, a new Lord. form of unity in your yes, church. Lord. Amen. In the name yes, of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, blessed Holy In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A united Amen. church. Is a strong church. A united church is a church that the world cannot afford not to listen to. Mm. We'll be back in a moment to continue. Welcome back, child of God. The Lord is blessing us richly. We are getting excited in our spirit via the riches of his word. And we've been looking at unity in the race as our topic under the sub team, Trinity Sunday. We are grateful that the Lord has honored today's discussion by bringing to us our revered church fathers. By my left again, the right reverend Ishaya Baba, the Lord Bishop, and Glekan Diocese of Zaria. And by my right, the right Reverend Ebenezer Saiki, the Lord Bishop, and Glekan Diocese of Akokedo. Fathers in God, most humbly, we welcome you again to the program. Thank you, Thank you so much. Question three. Satan attacks the Church of Christ today, both physically and spiritually. How can the unity of believers destroy this invasion? Compare, my Lord Bishop of Zaria, you yes. help us read Acts chapter 4. 15 to 19. My Lord Bishop of Akokedo, please, my Lord, verses 23 and 31 of that same Acts 4. And I read Acts 12, 5 to 9. We we'll welcome your submissions, my Lord. 15 to 19. I read Acts 4. 
But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to this man? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Mm. But so that it spread no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in his in this name so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of jesus but peter and john answered and said to them whether it is right in the sight of god to listen to to you more than god you judge then verse 23 and 31 my lord bishop of Acts 4 23 and 31 and being let go they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them verse 31 and when they had prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Awesome. Acts chapter 12, verse 5 to 9. But Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now, Behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Guide yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garments and follow me. So he went out and followed him, and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. Satan attacks the church, both physically and spiritually. How can we as believers destroy this invasion via the power of unity? My Lord. Um, <clears throat> the unity has power. Unity has tremendous power hmm. beyond our wildest imagination. Yes, my Lord. And dream. And Satan knows it. He knows it. And, you know, heaven wants us to be united. Now, we see in this text how the apostles were severely warned. They say, let us severely warn them hmm. that they speak no longer in this name. This was physical persecution. Hmm. Let them not. And Peter said, look, you should judge. Which, which, which one, do, who do we obey? Do we obey men or we obey God? God? And the disciples chose to obey God. And they prayed. And the place that where they were they were was shaken. Oh. And they sp spoke the word of God we boldly. Did. Boldly. The Satan seeks to attack us and to persecute us spiritually and physically. Oh. Why he can't come physically? He attacks spiritually. Oh. He attacks through his demonic forces. Hmm. He, att he attacks through, you know, uh, incantations and divinations. Hmm. And our joy, <laughs> awesome. our joy is that there is no divination against Israel. Hmm. Neither is there any sorcerer yeah, against Jacob. Jacob. Hmm. So even if they attack spiritually, we overcome by prayer. Awesome. As we unite together in the body of Christ to pray. And seek the face of God. And we proclaim the word of God. Awesome. Because that's the main thrust of our calling. Awesome. To proclaim the word of God boldly. So whether physical persecution or spiritual persecution, we are on the winning side with Christ. Awesome. For it is written, Greater is he that is in, in, in you than he, he that is that in, is the, in world. the world. First John chapter 4 verse 4. 
Hmm. And this is the faith that overcomes the world. Even in our faith. faith. Chapter hmm. 5, verse 4. First John. So, so we, we overcome. We are on the winning side. Also. We, are, we are the winning team. Mm. The church is a winning team. Uh -huh. We are on the winning uh, side of if, life. If two football, uh, football, footballers or two, two uh, maybe, football maybe Arsenal is playing Chelsea. The, the, the side that shout most is, is, is the winning side. Mm. So brother, you are on the winning side. Awesome. Awesome. You're on the winning side. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I pity some Arsenal and Chelsea fans. <laughs> <laughs> my lord. <laughs> my lord. Um, the attacks of the devil, how yeah, we can use the force of unity yeah, to dismantle yeah. such invasions. In the context of our study, mm. I want to say first, believers should create more of the presence of God. Awesome. Absolutely. I say so on the background that, you see, the scripture says at some point, the power of God became so strong in the lives of the apostles. Mm. We see their togetherness already. We've read how only one, two men were confronted with, look, stop this gospel, but he went back. So how he got back, he told them they prayed together. So after their prayers, we saw how the power of God was at work. Uh, they, 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 in the place of prayer, they were not found wanting. No wonder there was a report that the sick, those who had sick, those who had people who were were invalid they brought them mm. so their shadow the shadow of peter could fall so it means peter carried the presence, presence. jesus there was a presence he hey, carried jesus as an individual he, 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 he carried the presence mm. so le let's let's do a little of illustration here if i carry a presence hey god he can carry the presence jesus Baba right. Baba ba, ba, carries, carries the pre presence. And three of us, we, we have covered a ground there. Hey, this territory. We are stopping Jesus. the invasion of Satan. Hmm. Creating more of the presence of God. We, 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 have, we have blocked every loop. Satanic operation within you, the you, jurisdiction. You, you, and that can only happen if we are united. Jesus. If we are not united, it means we are creating gaps. Hey that satan could invade Hi. so I, I leave it at that ordinary man who <laughs> carried his presence and just just a little bit you see unity means you bury your own intentions and let the intention of god the agenda heaven has an agenda hmm. And that agenda is a proclamation the of the priority. gospel. Hmm. So your interest are, is buried. Your, 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 your intentions are submerged under the will of God. God. The will of God must be supreme. Awesome. And it's only when the will of God is supreme that there can be unity. Awesome. Because we come with all sorts of interests. Hmm. We come with all sorts of desires. With our, with our whims and caprices. But when we say, let God, let God and let God do it, and let his will be done in my life and the life of his church, um, there must be signs and wonders. So, so the mandate of unity calls us to JTC in our individual ambitions. Absolutely. And pursue the will of God as supreme. Look at it, I was saying, ordinary men, but they had his presence. Yes. You know, we have a lot of people, perhaps, in our pews, on our pulpits, all the degrees, but they don't have this presence. Yes. And that's, we need to pray that God will restore that presence. I, I, I add this. As you pray, you Jesus. carry a presence. Mm. Precisely. You carry a presence. Mm. Jesus. One of the ways we're taught those days, uh, one of our teachers, he graphically oh, explained, Jesus. he said, when you, we grew in a very rural setting where they do more of, this um the fry gary mm, you notice when my grandmother would be done frying gary the whole of her wrapper the whole clothing she was mm. wearing we she wears it. carries the, the fragments of, of the that smoke. smoke so if she has spent so much time in the presence of fire, frying gary so she, when she's done frying she leaves she carries the, the presence the fragrance that is how the fragrance Hi, Jesus. When you spend time in the presence of God, even when you rise from the place of prayer, as you go, you are carrying the presence. Absolutely. It may not be seen physically, hey. but something is happening. And, uh, uh, my Lord, 
you know, you see, it was demonstrated in Peter's life. He yeah. was in prison. Mm. But because the brethren were praying for him, mm. for him, the presence of God manifested in prison right. and loosed him from the chains. Hey. Even Paul and Silas, yes. on account of, of the praising God of and the the singing the psalms and hymns, the presence, the of, presence God. of God, God came, down came down and loosed him from the chains. Hmm. Brother, Thank you. you can only be delivered from the chains of the wicked as you go into the presence of God and carry that presence. Awesome. You know, Abedadon had his presence for three months. The mm. ark was domiciled in his house. Absolutely. And Babu said everything in his house blessed. was blessed. That's the power of his presence. Ordinary men, in Acts 4 13, Babu said when they considered they were ordinary men, Babu said they were marveled mm. and they reckoned yep. that they had been mm. with, with Jesus. Amazing. They had a presence. <laughs> That's what unity does. Child of God, may we be a church that carries his presence, not a church that is empty of Boy. his presence. Mm. Ah, our brother, Don Muen sang a song. He said, dwelling daily in your presence, mm. feasting at your table, Lord, I just want to be where, where, you, where are. you are. May that be our desire. Amen. Question four. How can we strengthen the unity of the church, even in our diversity? The church of God is diverse. People from different backgrounds, people from different settings. But our call is to strengthen it. My Lord Bishop of Akokedo, Galatians 3, 26-28. My Lord Bishop of Zaria, 2 Timothy 2, 23-25. Humbly, I will invite us to read and then we'll begin to summarize. Galatians 3, 26-28. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Hmm. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Awesome. Second Timothy 2, 23 to 25. My yes, Lord. Yes, I read. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And as a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. How do we strengthen unity even in our diversity? My Lord, let us stop seeing things that divide us. Mm. Don't see things that can divide the church. Yeah, Emphasize things that can yeah, unite yeah, us. Yeah, Say neither slave nor free, neither Jew nor Greek, neither male no nor female. female. In our federal system today, in the federal, in the way we operate as a government, mm. there's what they call federal character. character. And there must be a representation of the north. The, look, in the things of God, we are all one. one. Yes. We are all one. one. Yes, the federal character is heavenly character. Once yes, you are of the kingdom, <laughs> you are already kingdom character. the qualification. It's kingdom character. Hmm. Don't emphasize things that are capable of dividing us. Hmm. Jesus, the Lord will help us. Amen. There is a character, it's kingdom character. He doesn't recognize this one is white, this one is black. The important is that this one is a kingdom-minded man. My Lord, yes. how do we strengthen unity in our diversity? To strengthen unity, the Bible says we must avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. There are foolish and ignorant disputes. Disputes that are based on race. Hmm. They are ignorant and foolish. Where grace abound, race is is, is yeah, no. void. Mm. Race is nil. Mm. Where grace abound, race is nil. Mm. And the church of God is an arrangement of grace. My Lord. It is the grace of God that has brought about the church. Mm. And so race has no place. Jew, Gentile, and all sorts of garbage mm. have no place. Awesome. As a church of Nigeria, we must continually let the grace of God abide and abound and mix us. Awesome. Let it keep increasing. And we must not quarrel. Because a servant of God must not quarrel. quarrel. If we quarrel, we will generate strife. 
will generate unnecessary argument, will bring about disunity, which will hurt the church. Awesome. Let's bury our hatchets. Let's bury our ambitions. Let's bury our in, inordinate ambitions. And I, on inordinate ambition, I say it's an ambition that is not ordained. <laughs> awesome. B bury yes. it. Mm, awesome. Uh, the Lord let will. there be unity. Awesome. <laughs> building, us, uh, building up our most holy faith. That's the mandate. That's the challenge yes. of God for us. You know, interestingly, my Lord Bishop, when you were saying, when grace is present, grace is discountenance. Grace, grace is nil. You know, in Revelations, the angel took him and asked, who are these? Mm. He didn't say these are Anglicans. Mm -mm. He didn't say these are Nigerians. Mm. These are Americans. Mm. He said they are they that have washed what? their room in the blood. blood of the Lamb. That's stainless blood. You will not take your prejudice and your biases to heaven. You are not taking it to heaven. The important thing is that you are a child of God. The important thing is that you're committed to building up this church so that this church, you know, I discovered something. The experience of the apostles, the experience of the Holy Spirit was not a one-off no, uh, no, experience. No. You know, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, come. the Holy Spirit descended like closing tongues of fire and sat upon each and every one of them. That was in Acts on the mm, day of Pentecost. Mm. In Acts chapter 4 again, where we read now, he said when they prayed, the Holy Spirit came down again on each again. and every one of them. What brought about it? Unity. And they spoke the word of God boldly. Nobody could challenge them. Why? God gave on trust. We live in an age where people are looking for miracles, signs and wonders. To build it, to build it in the body of Christ, we need to be united. Conclusion. My Lord, you wanted to... Uh, well, um, basically to add that the last scripture he read, we should avoid stupid arguments. Mm. The Trinitarian theology had passed through criticism from church history. Mm. People, till this minute, people still question what is Trinity? Trinity. What is God the Father, God the Son, or God the Father, Son, mm. and Holy Spirit? These are arguments we should leave behind. It's ignorant men that argue things that are clear. Mm. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in scriptures. If we don't need to, it is people who are not ready to be united to match a common front that you see them begin to ask questions. Uh, Can kill Abel. How did he not get a wife to marry? These are issues. <laughs> Scriptures Elementary are, things. I mean, leave this mundane thing. Mm. Let's move towards Elementary. perfection. Awesome. And let's move towards perfection. Amazing. Avoid this argument. If awesome. you are part of those who would raise controversial issues, I mean, I beg you in the name of God, you don't need it. Awesome. We need to be united. Mm. But we said in John, the John the beloved writing, I think first John said there are three that bear witness. That's and the three is one. Yeah. The doctrine of Trinity is an established truth of the Bible. Despite denominational disparity and doctrinal divergences, our priority in preaching the gospel should be focused on winning souls into God's kingdom. In doing this, the kingdom of Satan will always be depopulated. Food for thought. Do you know, Satan cannot penetrate a united church in Christ Jesus. The enemy can only penetrate us when the hedge is broken, mm. when we get disunited. You know, it's, it's, it's my heart cry for the body of Christ in Nigeria because at times, even in governmental spaces, the tragedy of our experience is that the body of Christ, I'm talking beyond Anglican communion now, the body of Christ in its entirety, we don't seem to be united at times. And sometimes people exploit this. We pray that as we build an ecumenical body, that all of us genuinely, we promote the word of God and be united. Our memory verse, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 32. My Lord Bishop, please, I humbly invite us so that we take it together. Acts 4, 32, and it says, Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. All things in common, not some things. 
what a united church, the early church was, and the desire of God, the heart cry of heaven, is that the church of the now be united. I pray that the Lord will help us. You know, part of the things we've suffered, even in the governmental space, is that the church of God, especially in our country at times, we are working at cross purposes and redeem and deeper life and this and this. The Lord calls us to be united. Let's build ecumenism and the Lord will help us even as we do that. It's been an awesome time of refreshing under God today. And we are grateful for our resource persons that the Lord has brought our revered dear fathers in God, whom he had used to reach out to our spirits today. My Lord Bishop of Zaria, Father and God, thank you. You are welcome. Thank we are you grateful. So, thank you so much. We pray that the Lord will continue Amen. to enlarge your coast. Amen. And, thank and you the for sea us. of Zaria yes. will continue to increase. Amen. That in this decade of the reign of God, the Lord will reign supreme. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My Lord Bishop, thank you for those insights. Thank you for the mentoring. We are grateful. Thank you, sir. We pray that the work of God in your hand will continue to prosper. Amen. And that the sea of Akokedo we continue to grow in leaves and bound Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And Jesus prayed that they may be one. Mm. Child of God, be committed to building unity mm. in the body of Christ. We will see you again, same time, same station, next week. Until then, keep on living for Jesus. God bless you. <laughs>